are you the one who manually click on the refresh button to check the updated status on the process monitor if so we have a better approach now with the release of people tools 8.59 and beyond oracle peoplesoft introduced a new configuration option to auto refresh process status without manual intervention in this episode i'll guide you through the steps on how to configure this feature but before we dive in let's take a quick peek at how process status gets dynamically updated after we configure this feature Now that you have seen the demo let's dive in and make it a reality my name is Siva Khoya and i am thrilled to have you on my channel here are the necessary steps to set up auto refresh in process monitor pretty straight forward and easy to set up before diving into the configuration steps let's explore why it's essential to enable push notifications in both application server and process scheduler server we will also see the role of inter domain configuration on both these servers let's take a typical case where a user clicked on refresh button to check the updated status of the process that he just kicked off his request is routed to web server app server and finally reaches process scheduler server process scheduler server checks the current status of the process and sends that response through app server web server and finally the updated status is shown on the user interface but the problem is we don't want to click on refresh button every time to check the updated status of our process in order for that to happen the only way is process scheduler should voluntarily communicate whenever there is change in process status it should communicate that status through app server web server and somehow display it on user interface for reasons like this people soft created push notification framework push notification framework basically delivers updates to the user interface based on the changes that have occurred at the server level either it could be process scheduler or app server in our specific case we want our process scheduler to push the current status of the process from process scheduler to the app server that's the reason we have to enable push notifications on our process scheduler server likewise we want the app server to communicate the same status from app server to web server that's why we need to enable push notifications on our app server finally the updated status of our process is displayed on our process monitor page through web sockets I hope now you got some idea why we need to enable push notifications on both process scheduler server as well as on our app server. As part of the process, we also need to enable inter domain gateway in both process scheduler server as well as on our app server to ensure communication between process scheduler domain and app server domain is smooth. That's it guys, that's little background behind the configuration steps that we are going to perform next. All right, let's get our hands dirty and perform these configuration steps one by one. This is the back end of my PeopleSoft demo environment. Both app server and process scheduler server are installed in the same virtual box. First, I need to get to PS admin utility to enable push notifications and domains gateway on my app server. Now, initially I will log in as a root user and then switch to ps adm2 to access my ps admin utility i will go ahead and do these steps now now i will type ps admin and click enter to access ps admin utility Since I want to modify the configuration of app server, I will enter 1 and click enter. Again, I will input 1 to administer our app server, then click enter. Again 1 and enter. 
Since I want to configure this domain, I will input 4 and click enter. System is saying this action will shut down my app server domain. I will say yes and click enter. Now system is bringing down my app server. Here we can see a list of options that we can modify on our app server. In order to enable auto refresh feature on our process monitor page, we need to ensure options 12 and 13 are set to S. In my case, push notifications is already turned on. As you can see, option 13 is set to S. But domains gateway is switched off in my case. Now I'll go ahead and enable domains gateway. All I need to do is input 12 and click enter. That would automatically turn the flag domains gateway to S. As you can see, domains gateway is now turned on on my app server. Make sure you also set push notifications to yes. Now I will input number 14 to load the updated configuration. Now I am ready to boot my app server domain. So I will input 1 and click enter. After clicking on enter button, you will see a warning message saying that domains gateway boots only in serial mode. We can ignore that warning message, click enter to continue further. As you can see, my application server is up and running now. The way to confirm if domains gateway is properly set in my app server is to look for a file. The file name is interdom.gbb. You should be able to find that file. Once you navigate to the PeopleSoft configuration folder, then click on your application server domain. This is where you should find that file. This file will only be generated after you set domains gateway property in your app server. I will open the file and grab the access point ID. Please take a note of this access point ID. This is the access point for the process scheduler to communicate with the application server. We are going to use this value in the fourth step of our configuration. Please make sure to copy this value and save somewhere. Now I will go ahead and enable push notifications and domains gateway on my process scheduler server by following the same steps. Just that I will select here process scheduler instead of app server. Just everything remains the same. I will now go ahead and enable push notifications by inputting the number 5 and click enter. Likewise, I will enable domains gateway in my process scheduler by inputting number 4 and clicking enter. Since both of my configuration options are set to S, I will input the number 7 to load the updated configuration. Now I will start our process scheduler domain. My process scheduler is back up now. Now I will go ahead and verify if domains gateway is properly configured in my process scheduler. I will validate the same way like we did for my app server. First I will navigate to my PeopleSoft configuration folder. Then I will drill into my process scheduler folder. Then process scheduler domain. Here I will look for the file interdom.gbb. I will open the file and here is our access point. This is the access point that my application server should use to talk to my process scheduler server. In my next configuration step, I will show you where should I update this access point in my application server settings so that it can talk to my process scheduler. Now I will show you how to perform interdomain configurations, which means in this step I will show you how to update process scheduler access info in my app server settings. In our final step, we will be doing the reverse. We will update our app server access point information in our process scheduler settings so that both servers can talk to each other. I will now start with my app server. I will input 1 to access my app server. 
I will administer my app server. I will select my app server domain. Then I will configure my app server. I will say yes. This will shut down my app server domain. Now I will input the option 15 because we are doing custom configuration. Now the system is asking do you want to change any of these options shown here. I will say no. Even though it is not visible to you. I input letter N. Now I will click enter. Again it is asking do you want to change any of this option. I will say no. I will click enter. Again no. Enter. Now you can see we have process scheduler credentials. This is the configuration option that we have to update. Instead of PRCS1, we have to update with the process scheduler access point ID that we saved earlier. For this question, I will say yes, I input the letter Y and click enter. Now it is asking what should I change it to. Here I will provide my process scheduler access point ID that I saved earlier. I will add a pipe symbol. Here I need to provide process scheduler host name and the port number. I will use the same default port number for my application server and then click on enter button. Since I am done with my changes, I do not want to make any more changes. So I will input the letter Q and click enter. As you can see, my updated configuration is loaded now. Finally, I will boot my application server by inputting number 1 and clicking enter button. I will click enter to continue and I will wait for my app server to be up. In this final configuration step, we will repeat the same process as before with a slight modification. This time we will be modifying process scheduler configuration settings to include our app server access point. Let's go ahead and do it. This time I will select 2 to update process scheduler configuration settings. I will select 1, 1 again, 4, click enter. I will say yes to bring down my process scheduler so that I can make the changes. Now our process scheduler is coming down. Now I will input 8. I will say yes. No, I do not want to change any of these values. I will click enter. Again, no. Yes, I want to update my app server credentials. Now I will input default port number for my process scheduler and click enter. This is where I will input my application server access point ID. Pipe symbol. Now I will input the host name of my application server as well as the port number. I will click enter. So I am done with my changes. I do not want to make any more changes. So I will input Q and click enter. Finally, one last time I will boot my process scheduler server. Now my process scheduler is back up. Now if I go ahead and kick off a process and navigate to process monitor page, you can see without clicking on the refresh button, run status being updated. As you can see, it is going through different statuses. Likewise, the distribution status also will be automatically updated. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and sharing it so that others can benefit as well. I hope to see you in my next episode. Until then, keep learning.